This is new. Ukraine is abducting poor Russian soldiers and taking them to Ukraine. They are asking them, been to Ukraine? No, you will now. And this is some serious big badaboom. This is a secondary explosion of an ammunition depot at the Russian Morozovsk military air base caused by an attack of Ukrainian forces. Russian source on the Kursk situation. Unfortunately, there is no good news again. The knockout of the enemy from Martinovka, which happened today, became our only successful episode to date. Next, the enemy advanced. Unfortunately, the data of the Ukrainian armed forces entering Makhnovka was confirmed. Now there is objective control data for this. This means that tomorrow we may finally lose Sudja. But the bad news in this area didn't end there. There is also information that the enemy was seen in the village, Giri. Moreover, not just small groups, but infantry on heavy equipment. If this is so, then the enemy is deeply enveloping our group in Suja and preparing a springboard for movement to the south and east. Here, unfortunately, we don't yet see a particularly dense battle formation, and the enemy has a lot of reserves. Unfortunately, there is no good news again. The knockout of the enemy from Martinovka, which happened today, became our only successful episode to date. Next, the enemy advanced. Unfortunately, the data of the Ukrainian armed forces entering Makhnovka was confirmed. Now there is objective control data for this. This means that tomorrow we may finally lose Sudza. But the bad news in this area didn't end there. There is also information that the enemy was seen in the village. Giri. Moreover, not just small groups, but infantry on heavy equipment. If this is so, then the enemy is deeply enveloping our group in Suja and preparing a springboard for movement to the south and east. Here, unfortunately, we don't yet see a particularly dense battle formation, and the enemy has a lot of reserves. Also, according to our intelligence, the enemy has already brought units of four brigades into our territory, and so far, despite heavy losses, their numbers here are only growing. Despite the fact that today we managed to repel the attack on Cherkasy Poreshnoye, its attack on Malaya Loknia was crowned with success, and probably tomorrow he will try to build on his success here. The enemy is also gradually mastering the approaches to Koronevo. In the evening, his forces entered the village, Krasnuk Diabrsko, which, together with the threat from Glukov, makes the position of our forces in the Glushkovsky region very risky. They can quickly be cut off from the rest of the forces. Intensified work of the enemy's DRG was also noted in the area southwest of Rilsk, which suggests that an attack by the Ukrainian armed forces from Glukov could occur in the very near future. That is, we see that the situation continues to deteriorate rapidly. And I personally don't understand what those who say that victory is already close are counting on. As far as I understand the situation, we will mostly be on the defensive for the next few days. May God grant it to be successful. Let's keep our fingers crossed for the guys and pray for them. The military airfield of the Russian Federation in the Lepetsk region, after one of the latest and most accurate attacks by the Ukrainian armed forces. Satellite images show the destruction at the Russian airbase.
Danish military expert Anders Nielsen tells how Putin is using Russian conscripts in the war with Ukraine. It's also important to be aware of the role of conscript soldiers in the Russian army. Uh, Putin has so far been very reluctant to use conscripts in the war with Ukraine, and the reason for that is about domestic politics and the fact that it would just be extremely unpopular in Russia to send conscripts into battle because they're not volunteers and also because conscription is something that touches many families in Russia. There are many young men that are going through conscription right now or that will be going through conscription in the coming years and they have mothers and fathers and cousins and siblings so if you start using conscripts in the war then all these people are going to be afraid on a personal level about the safety of themselves or or their loved ones and they might uh, start getting dissatisfied with the government that is waging this war so uh, for reasons of regime security, uh, the Russian army has essentially been divided into two different kinds of armies. So there's, there's one army that is fighting uh, in Ukraine, and it consists of people that have more or less volunteered to be there. And then there is another army, which is the conscript army. And here the conscripts are going uh, through the same kind of training that they've always done, and it's not being used in Ukraine. But Russia's Kursk region is not defined as part of the battle zone, and it means that it was actually protected by conscript units. So Ukraine's attack into Kursk therefore creates a dilemma for Putin, because either he will now have to accept that conscripts are being used for actual battle in the fight against the Ukrainian army, or else he will have to withdraw those conscript units from the area, and he will have to replace them with volunteer units that were supposed to be used in Ukraine. So this question of conscription and conscript soldiers is also important to keep in mind because it means that Ukraine's incursion into the Kursk region has the potential of touching something that is very sensitive in, in, in the Russian society, and that is the, the safety of the young men that are going through conscription. And so it's this understanding that all Russian soldiers are not created equally. So if, if, if Ukraine, kills some poor guy that is from Siberia and he joined the army to earn some money, then that's not something that's going to get people upset in the middle class neighborhoods in Moscow and St. Petersburg. But if the conscripts start dying, then they will care because that might hit their own family, it can hit someone they know. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.